Hello everybody and welcome back to the Empty Nest Teacher channel. Those of you that are new to the channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. To those of you that have seen a few of the videos here before, thank you so much for coming back. We don't take anybody for granted. Um, so if you looked at the um, previous few videos for Vlogmas, this is Vlogmas Day 6, December 6, 2021. Um, you know that I'm preparing for my observation, my first formal observation. Um, so the lesson that I will be teaching will be on um, asking and answering questions. Um, so I just got off the phone with my supervising teacher. Shout out to my supervising teacher. I love her. All right. Mrs. McLean. She is amazing. Amazing. Um I just got off the phone with her and she gave me um, a lot of good information, a lot of reminders um, and pointers to um, help me with um, the um, sequence of activities, um, just making sure I understand um, or I'm re reminded about the framework, um, the FFT framework for teaching and um, the different domains that I will be observed and evaluated um, in. And so I'm so appreciative to her about that. Um, so I'm just gonna show you really quickly the story, or not the story, it's an informational text. Um, how do you raise a raisin? Okay, so this is the text that we use, HMH. And it's in the my book number two, page 310. Um, so this is the lesson that we're going to be started on. This is the beginning of our cycle two. So it will be quarter two, cycle two, day two um, for this lesson. And so um, she, you know, gave me a lot of good ideas of how I can uh, make sure that the students are engaged and we can um, demonstrate that engagement, demonstrate um, the critical thinking skills um, that they need to utilize in order to make sure that um, the information that they're reading, they understand it, to deepen their understanding. Okay. Um, and the way this, this picture right here made me think of the California raisins. And I really wish <laughs> that I had those stuffed animals of California raisins that we had back when I was younger. If you grew up in like the 80s, I think it was the 80s, the California raisins. This is, <laughs> it definitely reminds me of that. And if I had the little stuffed animals or the little plastic animals, I would have brought them in for this lesson because this would have been perfect. Um, but um, I do love the way that um, this particular text is set up. Um, because this is informational text, it's two genres, informational text as well as poetry. Um, so I love the way that it's set up. It's a little easier than some other texts um, for student discussion. And I will show you, um, so this right here, and I know it's backwards for you guys, but as you can see, um, each section is a different question. And so under the question, in bold is the question, and then um, under that, in the regular font, is the fact, um, that's where the informational text comes in, is the fact um, about a raise and pertaining to that question. And the question is listed, or the question is given in the form of poetry. So all of these questions, um, there are some rhyming lines, we know what poetry means. And so um, this particular text makes it a little bit easier to break up because we can basically focus on this question. Um, they can turn and talk in their PB&J burritos. Um, that's their discussion groups um, or discussion partners. It will be, uh, they will have partners as opposed to larger groups for this one. Um, and then we can move to each question um, and then discuss the fact. So um, I'm glad that for my observation, you know, this is making it a little bit easier. So there are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are ten questions. So ten sections. Um, 
that this um, informational text is broken up into. And so I think the poetry, you know, basically gives it a little fun spin on it. Um, so we'll definitely be uh, discussing the poetry and the question and then getting into the meat of the um, facts that are given about the raisins. Of course, there are some things that um, we're gonna be covering, things that they, kind of like a KWL chart, what did I already know? The N in no. What did I already know about raisins? Um, and then the W, what do I want to know about raisins? And then um, at the end of, of the lesson, what did I learn? What is some new information that I learned about raisins? And so with 10 different questions and 10 different facts, I'm sure that some of them we may already know, and some of them the students may already know. Um, some of them uh, may be what they decide they wanna learn. And then of course, I'm sure the whole class will walk away with um, new facts that they have learned about raisins. Um, one of the things that I plan to do is to um, go to the store and buy boxes of raisins. <laughs> Um, to kind of go with the lesson just to make it a little more fun. Um, at least they'll have, um, you know, the raisins in front of them. So as we're reading about the fun facts of raisins and, you know, how they were grapes and, you know, the process to go from a grape to a raisin. And we can see that, you know, he's taking a little bath there so he can get wrinkled. Um, we know the grapes are not wrinkled, but he's taking a little bath there. And he's getting wrinkled as we would get wrinkled if we sat in the bathtub for a long period of time. So I want them to be able to have um, those raisins in front of them so they can, you know, actually, you know, look at them and kind of match the um, physical ca characteristics um, and, and some of the things that may be going through their mind as we're going through these lessons, uh, this lesson and answering these questions and learning about these facts. Um, so I'm excited about the lesson. Um, I can't say that I'm like excited about the observation just because it's an observation. So I'm, you know, I said in the pre a previous video, you know, of course there's a level of um, anxiety or, you know, nervousness that comes with that because you know that, um, you know, your principal, your supervisor is evaluating you and watching you um, for about 30 minutes. So, um, but I feel, you know, I felt okay, but I feel even better after talking to my supervising teacher. So, um, again, shout out to Mrs. McLean. I love you. Like, I love you, love you. <laughs> um, she is meticulous in what she does. Um, and I know she has a load, a caseload of other teachers. I think like 14 or 15 other teachers. Um, and, you know, she still takes the time to check out on me. She, she came to my class today, um, you know, just to just kind of observe informal, you know, informally observe so that she can give me some feedback. Um, and the feedback is always amazing feedback that I can learn from and continue to learn from, not just, you know, this year being a first year teacher. Um, I always take her um, wonderings and her highlights um, and the considerations that she gives me, the suggestions that she gives me, and I um, put them in a document that um, I can have everything um, on one document because I want to continue to utilize um, those suggestions and, and the different um, pieces of information and, and pointers that she gives me um, throughout my career. Um, so I'm just so grateful to her for that. And, you know, I know that it, this is just not a nine to five for a supervising teacher. I can only imagine um, how busy her caseload keeps her. But um, she still, like I said, checks in on me. And I'm sure she puts the same effort and the same care and love into um, the other teachers that she is assisting. Um, so to those, shout out to the supervising teachers. Um, well, she was my, let me, let me change this. She was my supervising teacher when I went through the internship phase. So I have passed the internship pay, phase and I'm now in the residency phase of my program. So she has switched from my supervising teacher to my mentor teacher. Okay, so I am her mentee. So that, um, the title has shifted. But, um, so during the, um, internship phase, she was with me for, I believe it was eight weeks every day. 
And so she was in the, in the classroom with me and um, she was helping me with the students and giving me pointers. And I got feedback um, from her every day based on, um, you know, student engagement, based on, of course, you know, my delivery of lessons, based on um, the physical um, appearance of the classroom, making sure that the atmosphere, um, you know, is what it needs to be to promote learning. Um, she helped me with my, my boards. Um, I'll show you really quick. She helped me <laughs> put up my number line and my alphabets up here. She got up on the chair and she, you know, put them up after I laminated them and everything. So um, the job of a supervising teacher or a mentor teacher um, is not it's not to be played with. It's not um, to be taken lightly. And so, again, I appreciate um, those who have been in the classroom in the past and have taken it upon themselves to shift into a new gear and um, mentor and train um, us up and coming teachers. Um, I do not take that for granted because um, I honestly don't know. You know, of course, I would have done my best. Um, and at times our best, you know, is good, but I definitely would not have been able to get the things accomplished that I did um, to this point. I wouldn't have been able to finish those without her help and without her guidance. And um, she continuously, you know, helps and, and guides me. And so for that, I, you know, am, I keep on saying it and I, because I mean it, I'm extremely appreciative to her. Um, so anyway, um, I just wanted to share that um, tomorrow is my pre-conference. So I am, um, you know, finishing up my observation today. I mean, not my observation, my observation lesson plan today to send it to my principal. Um, so I just had the text out and just trying to, you know, make sure that I had um, those uh, pieces of the lesson plan that I need, um, making sure that I try to dot every I and cross every T that I can. Um, and I am going to go into this uh, pre-conference meeting tomorrow morning positive. I'm going to go into it um, prayerful um, because I'm, that's one thing I'm not going to do is <laughs> leave God out of it and think it's all me. Um, you know, I, he is the one that put me here. You can go look at another video that I posted about how I became a teacher or why I became a teacher. Um, I can say that I am enjoying it. And I've said that on a number of other videos as well. But, um, you know, he is the reason that I'm, you know, getting through this program. And um, so I don't take him for granted. If I'm not going to take other people for granted. I certainly can't take my Lord for granted. Um, so anyway... I just wanted to share that with you. So um, how do you raise a raise? And if you want to go to YouTube, they do have read alouds for that. And I will be using the read aloud um, for my observation during my observation lesson um, so that they can, my students can hear. So I teach third grade for those of you that are new to the channel. Um, but because of the pandemic gaps and, you know, other gaps that may have been existing at the, uh, prior to the pandemic, um, some of my students, you know, can't read um, the way a um, third grade level uh, reader should read. And so um, I try to use other things. Of course, you know, they will have their textbooks as we read so they can, you know, see the letters, see the words, see the questions, you know, see the facts. Um, but I also like to uh, tap into other senses, which is listening to it as you read. Um, so they're hearing the sounds of the words as they read. And then I will also um, put it up on, display it on the, the um, board behind me. And so um, some of them like to look at the board and then others like to look at um, the text, the, book, the actual uh, textbook that they have. So um, that's their choice. And, you know, we're trying to tap into uh, whatever helps them to learn the best. So... Again, how do you raise a raisin will be um, the text that my observation will be on and it will, the skill is asking and answering questions. 
Um, so let me just tell you really quickly for asking and answering questions um, according to the anchor chart um, that we use for HMH, there are um, different questions. So asking and answering questions before, during, and after reading helps you to do th three things, to make predictions, to clarify things that might seem unclear, and to think more deeply about the text. So that is um, the, the meat of um, this lesson. And so, so these are some of the example questions that we ask um, in order to you know, pull out um, that information that we need. When is this happening? Who is this person? What will this be about? Where in the text can I find an answer to my question? And why did the author write this? So um, we want to make sure the students not just read through it. Um, I have a lot of students that try to race through things to, just to say, I'm done, I'm first. <laughs> but I'm trying to get them to slow down and to um, make sure that they understand, uh, make sure they know how to tap into the cognitive thinking, um, to make predictions and to know that they need clarifications on things that they don't understand. If it's unclear to you, don't just skip over it. You know, use context clues, you know, to figure out what is um, the author talking about here? What is it that I need to learn here? And then think more deeply about the text. Um, of course, it's easy for students to just, you know, think at a surface level. Um, and like I said, just read to say I read as opposed to read to get the gist of what um, I actually read. And so asking those type of questions that I listed will help them to do that. So that is what we will endeavor to do um, on Thursday, December 9th. Um, so that is that. So um, thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate you stopping by our channel again. If you would hit the like button, and yes, I did it with both fingers, hit the like button with both fingers. <laughs> um, please subscribe to the channel or even hit the notification bell. So every time I upload a new video, you will be amongst the first to find out. You will get the, a notification from the Empty Nest Teacher channel. So again, thank you so much for staying to the end of this video. I appreciate you. I will um, in these, it is Vlogmas, so we're, you know, uploading every day. So I will let you know what happens, you know, the pre-conference is tomorrow. I'll let you know what happens. That um, December 7th video will be about the pre-conference. Um, and then Wednesday, um, there's a little day in between. And then on Thursday will be the observation. So I will come back on Thursday to let you know what happened um, with the observation. I don't know when I'll be getting the feedback from the observation. So I have to let you know how, how I felt about the observation and my thoughts about the observation. But at some point, whenever I get the feedback from my principal, I will let you know what that feedback was. Good and bad, I will let you know. I will be honest about it, okay? So I hope everybody is having an awesome December. It's not super cold here. I am teaching in Maryland. I live in Maryland. It's not super cold here, but I know at some point it's coming. I think it's supposed to be snowing this week um, at some point. So I know the cold front is coming and, um, you know, I'm not ready for the snow. I'm never ready for the snow. But anyway, thank you again for listening and I hope to see you tomorrow, December 7th, when I tell you about my pre-conference. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.